I'm Abby, I'm a junior experiential design major, and this is my piece, Running Out of Time. I originally created this piece in my Digital as a Designed Object class, and we were challenged to um, find data and collect data throughout the semester and translate it to a sculpture piece. And so what you see here is the runs I took over the semester during quarantine. I really got into running. So I was able to go on all of these runs, each uh, piece of yarn being a run, and um, translate it into a sculpture and each color represents a different month that I went on that specific run. Essentially this data translated into a visual language is kind of what I wanted to capture in this piece. Um, again, it initially being very visually interesting, but then holding deeper meaning with how uh, it was something that really helped me through quarantine, that being running and translated my runs into this sculpture piece. Hi, my name is Erin Seeley. Um, I'm a studio arts major. For this show, the student exhibition, I submitted a work called Sanctify. Uh, while I was working on this work, I asked myself the question, what should be utilized more, the head or the heart? A lot of people ask this question thinking that there is an answer, but honestly, there's not an answer. In my piece, I tried to embody the idea that you should utilize both. Both should be considered holy and that, you know, the question should rather be, how can I utilize both and strengthen both? I decided to choose a black paper, white pencil slash charcoal for the piece, and then the gold is gold acrylic paint. I wanted to utilize gold paint because it sticks out. My name is Claire Kelly and I'm a photography and design communications major and this piece is called Reckoning in Blue. It's a cyanotype quilt and it was a collaborative piece between myself and five other um, photography students here at Belmont and it's inspired by the history of the Belmont Mansion. We did a lot of research about the Belmont Mansion and um, the people who lived there, the people who owned it. Featured on the quilt are several names of people who were enslaved at the Belmont Mansion. And unfortunately, those names are pretty much the only record of their lives that are left today. It also features photos of Adelicia Acklin and Isaac Franklin, who lived at the Belmont Mansion, owned um, the land whenever Belmont was a plantation. And there's a red line going through the piece that ties the portrait of Adelicia Acklin and Isaac Franklin to a photo of the Belmont Mansion. That red line represents um, them kind of being the core ties of this story and how they're tied to everything that happened at the Belmont Mansion. And specifically, the line is red to represent the historic practice of redlining as well. Personally, from this piece, I learned a lot about the history of Belmont. I've been a student here for four years, and this piece was a big part of us personally reckoning with that and kind of bringing attention to that history. And it also was just a great um, collaborative process between several people who brought all of our ideas together and made a piece that makes a great statement. I'm Alexander Milford. I'm a sophomore studio art major. In my work, I focus pretty much solely on portraiture and the human figure. And this past semester, I've been focusing more on raw human emotion and the emotions that are less focused on but equally as present in our lives. And so my piece, Addicted, is focusing on how people are addicted to a number of things and the kind of mental and physical toll that it can take on a person. Uh, this was my first time working with white charcoal uh, solely on a black piece of paper, uh, but I felt that despite it being my first time, it was a, an, a, an important part of the piece in the way that it can capture kind of black and white feel of the um, mental toll that it can take.
I'm Will Maddox. I am a sophomore studio art major, and this is my piece, I'm Beautiful and I Deserve Flowers. It originated as just a piece that I was gonna do uh, sort of for me, um, and it was just very random how I came up with it. But when I was thinking about this piece, I didn't really have like a model I could use except for myself, which I always have. Um, and so when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for this piece, I kind of had to push myself to be like, I'm beautiful and I deserve flowers. Like I deserve to make a piece about myself and I deserve to paint myself in a better light than I have in the past. But I'm into the aspect of growth and like blooming as both something that flowers do and people do. Um, and it sort of goes along with coming out of uh, you know, traumatic or hurtful experiences, which I think we can all, re all really relate to after 2020, um, and then sort of becoming a better person through that and becoming more beautiful through that. When I came back to it now, I think part of the reason that makes this piece successful is that I come to it with the knowledge of both how to use the medium effectively and how to sort of get across what I'm trying to get across in my art, which is what I've been learning at Belmont. Uh, what's next for me, I would say, is probably just continuing uh, learning why I'm so into uh, flowers and flower portraiture uh, specifically. Um, I've done two more pieces that are kind of in the collection. One's right there. Um, and yeah, I plan on doing a lot, lot more. <laughs>